Hello, this is Sam. Uh, today we have a special treat. We're going to be making halibut fillets for dinner, and we're going to be making them two ways. Uh, one is going to be in the parchment paper and baked in the oven. Um, as the French call that, it's en papillot. Um, it'll be a nice little packet, and once you open it up, uh, it'll come out with the, the steamy fragrance of a, of a, of a well, uh, perfectly cooked halibut. The other way that we're, oh, and here's the parchment I got today. The other way we're going to do it, and this is gonna be fun, is, if you don't know what these are, these are fig leaves, as big as my face. My neighbor has a beautiful fig, fig leaf tree, and uh, the figs are just starting to uh, get ripe and go into season, but it's got very large um, fig leaves, that which, have, which have a very nice vanilla, give off a very nice vanilla uh, scent, um, you know, from the sap. And so we're going to wrap the other uh, halibut filet in, in these fig leaves, uh, tie them up, and grill them. So it's gonna be halibut two ways. Uh, why don't we begin? So let me show you what my ingredients look like. Here we have, here are our halibut fillets. I've got, uh, they're both a little under a pound, about 0.8 pounds, so you know, probably about 12, ounce, 12 to 14 ounces. Um, now, in so for the, the parchment paper and the fig leaf, we're going to be wrapping them up. Um, so I'm gonna use very similar, the similar ingredients in both. What, what we have here is I, I uh, got some, some bacon. Uh, this is thick cut smoked bacon, and I chopped them up some scallions, uh, which I cut kind of across the grain to give a nice angled cut. Some capers that I have soaking in water to get rid of excess uh, salt, brininess. And then we got some frozen peas here. If, if the English peas were in season, uh, that'd be great to use as well. Those things are like those large, those large peas that are, are very nice. Um, here we have some olives. Um, probably only use olives in one of the, the preparations because I have a daughter that is not a big fan of the olives. And got some pickled jalapeno. So those those are the and, and some and some uh, and some garlic here as well. Those are the the dry ingredients. Um, so what we have for the wet, um, I have some peanut oil. Um, normally, again, I would use olive oil. Uh, to drizzle onto uh, a parchment uh, fish pack, uh, but I'm going to be using uh, peanut oil. I've just been on a theme with that. Uh, some ponzu sauce. Now ponzu is a nice sauce. You might be familiar with it if you've had some uh, poke bowls. Um, ponzu is a, it's a blend of soy sauce with uh, the yuzu Japanese citrus and some uh, extract from the fish bonito flakes. So it's very pungent and. Uh, you know, um, as they say, it's also the Japanese term. It's also umami. Um, and I picked up some bone broth. This is a chicken bone broth uh, with lemon and rosemary. Uh, now this is packaged as marketed as something that you could uh, you can heat, sip, and go. So a lot of people might want to uh, drink a warm bone broth uh, just as a, a, a dietary supplement with a lot of good nutrition in it, uh, but I'm, I'm gonna be using that goodness and adding it to uh, our, our parchment. Finally, I have some Chardonnay. This is uh, Rutherford Ranch from the Napa Valley. Uh, it's a nice Chardonnay 2017 that we've been drinking this week. Um, so those are the core elements. Um, I guess one more dry ingredient that I'm looking over here is some fresh corn. Um, so why don't we start with that? Now, this is a fresh, corn hole in the cob, so I'm, the way you want to get the, the kernels, uh, and I'm probably sure it's gonna spill all over, but if you had like a, well, let's just use this enclosed pan that we're gonna be cooking with. So you just hold it uh, vertically and just get it like kernel deep and just push that blade down. Push that blade down. And you can see the kernels are starting to come off. You don't wanna to go too deep because then you're gonna get beginning into the core, uh, where it's kind of like the hard and edible uh, fibrous components of the corn. 
All right. So you can see if you do it four ways as a square, you pretty much get most of the good kernel, kernel goodness from that corn. So we're going to do one more. Go down again. Watch your fingers, of course. Uh, by the way, excuse my shirt. I went for a run before this video. Uh, it's a very nice day today. Uh, probably borderline too hot to be running outside. 80 degrees, but nice nonetheless. All right, so these corn are ready to go. You just heard that beep. I've been preheating the oven. And so I'm preheating the oven at 400 degrees. Uh, and, you know, I just got these things from recipes on the internet, so obviously something you can do as well. <clears throat> All right, so if you look here, I got my corn. So I'll set aside the corn in another bowl here. All right, we're gonna be using this pan to bake the parchment halibut fish pack. Okay, now we have, I have two cloves of garlic. Uh, so just chop those up, you know, so we'll have approximately one chopped garlic clove per fish pack. All right. All right, so let's start, let's start composing this. And I'm going to start with the parchment. All right. So, I take the pan. Here is my first halibut filet, uh, which I've salted. Uh, nice skin. All right. Now, for this one, I'm going to take the parchment paper. Now, they sell these parchment papers like this as an actual bag, which makes it very easy, um, but a little bit more pricey. You can also get rolls of the parchment paper and make your own and just fold fold up the fish pack when you're when you're preparing it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take some of this corn that we just chopped and lay it down as a bed. Fish. Alright. And then I'm gonna take some of the peas, add those to the bed, and put in the hell of it filet here. Now let's add some of these other ingredients. So first we got some, I'm gonna take that garlic, the nice garlic we chopped. All right, and I've got some of the, I've got some of the jalapenos. These are pickled jalapenos, um, which are popular in our household. So I use that in a lot of ingredients and also with burgers and hot dogs and things like that. All right. And take some of those capers as well. Uh, okay, the capers in. Some of the diced scallions, and got some of this olives. Got some of the olives in the, the parchment pack. All right, all right. Now. Put some of the ponzu sauce, stick a little bit of the ponzu on top. Some of the peanut oil. Chardonnay. And I'm opening up the bone broth. Right now, let's add some of that. Let's add a little bit more of that. I, I put a little bit more of that in there. Okay, and finally, let's add some black pepper on top of there. Okay. So, if you can see in there, um, we've got the pack. It's basically ready to go. All right, so let me fold this up.
and just folding it up and closing it like a shopping bag. Um, okay, now, now you can see the pack. That pack is ready. Let's work on the fig leaf. I'm gonna take one of these fig leaves here. Uh, now this won't hold as much because it's, it's not in a totally enclosed um, like the parchment paper is. Okay, so here's the corn and uh, peas laying the halibut right there. And here's some jalapeno, some scallion. Let's put some of the capers, bacon, all right, peanut oil. And the liquids will probably not survive into the actual finished package as well. Some ponzu and some of that broth. And here's some of the garlic and some more jalapenos. Okay. Now, this is going to be more an exercise to wrap this. Um, so I also have, this is, this is, um, this is uh, butcher's twine. Um, so you can get this at most any market, uh, which I'll use to tie it up. All right. So I'm going to take one of the leaves, uh, put it on the other side, and just start folding over. All right, the edges to start packaging, patch, packaging this up. All right, so I got most of it enclosed. I'm gonna add one more leaf here for some more coverage. Okay, now let me take the twine. Okay, I'm gonna get two pieces of this twine. Just pull that in and just start working it on sealing that and just knot it. Now the twine, you can also use toothpicks to seal this if you want, prefer. Um, either way, you can soak the twine or the toothpick in water prior to wrapping. Um, if you're going to grill this like I am, uh, the reason being is um, otherwise the twine will probably or the toothpick will start to, to burn. Um, so you can also do that. I have not for this. Um, it should be okay. We're not going to be cooking it too long. And I'll just take off the stem. Okay. All right, so here, here is a package. Uh, now, all right, let me get one more plate. I'm gonna separate out these two different preparations. All right, so here is the one that's wrapped in the fig leaf, ready to be barbecued. And here is the unpopular parchment paper, which is ready to throw into the oven which I am going to do now. Now you can cook this for 12 to 15 minutes. Um, given that these are larger fillets, I'll probably go on the, the, the hot, uh, heavier side with the 15 minutes. So putting it into the oven that's been preheating for 400 degrees. All right. All right, and sit right tight and I'll start uh, back up at the barbecue phase.